Well, hello, all you cute young ladies. It's so good to see you and be with you and work on this brownie badge together. I'm Mary Lil Owens. I'm a docent at the Montgomery Museum. And what that means is that when we have visitors to the museum, I get to talk with people about the art and have conversations about what they think of the various art at the museum. Not all of it is inside. We have a sculpture garden outside and we're gonna be working today on an outdoor kind of artwork badge, the Brownie Outdoor Art Creator Badge. So if you have your handbook with you, you can kind of follow along with a lot of the things we'll be talking about. Um, I'm hoping that maybe those of you who are in Montgomery can visit us when our museum reopens and we can go look at some of the outdoor art and the indoor art there. Uh, one thing you have to do if you're going to do the outdoor art badge is be a good observer. Your handbook tells you to look up, be birds, tall trees. Uh, when you look down, here's what they tell you to do. When you look down, you look through a paper towel holder. And that keeps your vision kind of narrow, doesn't it? You don't get to see everything. You focus on just a small thing. So when you look up, you see the whole sky, clouds, trees, maybe birds. And when you look down, you might focus on small things like worms, bugs, little tiny flowers, leaves. And you think, oh, why do I want to look at bugs and worms? Well, they're kind of interesting. They move differently than the way we move. They live in different places. And if we're going to do art outside with outside activities, we want to be very observant. Uh, the first thing I asked you all to bring was collect five different kinds of leaves and we're going to do a leaf rubbing. Well, um, we had a big storm here this weekend and all kinds of tree branches and leaves fell off. And so I gathered all kinds, let me show you some of the leaves I gathered. This one, can you all see that? It's huge. That's a leaf from a fig tree. This is an interesting shape too. Uh, and then some smaller ones, different shapes. Can you all see those? Um, and here's some of the leaf rubbings that I made. See this leaf? That, that was this big leaf right here. And we did a rubbing of it with a colored pastel crayon. And then I cut out some of the ones that I had done the rubbing of. See this one? You actually see the veins of the leaf and See the stem down here? What I thought we would do is uh, do a leaf rubbing today. So if you have a piece of paper and a crayon or a piece of chalk or a pastel, here's how we do it. Uh, I'm going to try to hold this up so you all can see without all my supplies falling apart. Can you all see what I'm doing? Holding this piece of white paper up, what I've done is take the big piece of paper, fold it in half, put the leaf in the middle. Let's see. I'm putting my leaf in the middle of the two sheets and then closing the top over. So, oh, and my leaf just fell out. <laughs> I didn't want to glue it down because that kind of messes up the rubbing. Uh, so I'm gonna have to hang on to it tightly. All right, now I've got the leaf between two sheets of paper. Now, see that? Now I'm going to take my pastel, which I picked as blue, but you could pick any color you want, or if you have a crayon. Now, with this, you do have to rub a little bit hard. You have to press down so you'll get the impression of the leaf. Can you see what it's doing? Nadia, I can't see very well because I'm not looking at it, but I'm going to put that down for just a second.
Now I rubbed it a little harder and that's hard to see, but if you have your scissors, you would follow the dark lines of, this is the stem and the leaf comes around like this and you just don't pay attention to all the other marks and you should end up with something that looks like this. So you have your stem and all the veins of the leaves and then this leaf has kind of a jaggedy edge and once you get that done and you can take as much time as you need maybe not on here if you'd rather be you know pick the leaf you want to use and pick the color you want to use for the rubbing and then what I thought would be really fun is we've all been away from grandparents or cousins or maybe even our best friends for the last few weeks. You might want to make a greeting card out of your leaf. You could cut your leaf out and paste it on a, another piece of paper. And then when you get it pasted, and my fingers have blue all over them now, you get it pasted, you could write a note. I've been missing you while we've all been inside and it'll be good to see you again. So you could paste your leaf wherever you wanted it in the inside of the, in the inside of your little greeting card or on the outside and you could write your message. Because you all see everything well enough with me with my leaf falling. Anybody have a question about that? Okay. Uh, now, let me tell you, and you can work on your leaves at home. You certainly don't get, need to have them finished right here today, uh, but I hope you get the general idea that you do have to kind of rub it between two pieces of paper, and, and then you'll see um, the, the way the leaf is shaped and the veins of the leaves and maybe jagged edges or pointy edges. But then you're going to look at your Brownie Handbook and choose one of several other activities to do during this next week while we're away from each other. And we'll all bring what we've done for next week's meeting. One of the things they suggest is to walk around outside and of course be careful. Don't get near poison ivy. Don't leave anything on the ground. We, we want to care about the outdoor area that we're in, even if it's our own backyard, or maybe you'll be in a nearby public park or walking around your neighborhood when you take your dog for a walk and you'll be looking for things. Well, I did that this last week and I found some really cool things. One of the things I thought was the neatest is this acorn. Can you all see that? What does it look like to you? To me, it looks like a little elf with a fuzzy hat on it. It's a big acorn. Most of acorns are tiny, but this is one of those big ones. And sometimes you can get the little hat off. So you have, here's your little head here, and he has a little hat. So you could draw a little face on that and make it be an elf's. Or here's what I did with one of my, let me see, where is it? I used the inside of the little, what I call a little hat, and I put some grass in it, and then I found some little pebbles, and it looked like a bird's nest with the eggs in there. Or maybe it could even look like an Easter basket. If you, I found some pebbles, and I thought, oh, I could paint those pink and blue and yellow, and it would look like an Easter basket. So all kinds of ideas you can find with just outdoor things that you just pick up. Um, you could also, now here's a huge pine cone, see, and it's jaggedy, and here's a medium-sized pine cone, and here's a really smaller one. See how little this one is? Well, if you look at this from this angle, it kind of looks like a flower, doesn't it? So what I did was find one of those little ones and I painted it just with water-based paint. And from that angle, it looks like what? A rose. And, and the other kind of pine cones, the bottom of them, see that? That looks like a, a flower, doesn't it? 
To me, that looks like a zinnia. So here's what I did with the, the ones that look like that on the bottom. I painted them and I glued a little button in the middle for, this, for the middle part of the flower. Here's another one. Oops. And another one. So you could get a whole bouquet of flowers and give it to someone you care about. Uh, and they might not even recognize that that's a pine cone once you've got it uh, painted. One of your activities uh, for you to choose from in your handbook on this badge is make an elf house. You know, brownie elves, you all know about brownie elves. That's your, you got your name because brownies were considered little elves and they came in during the night and they did wonderful things. They made beautiful things for people and left them in their houses. So your handbook suggests you make a little house for the elf. Now, what could you make that out of? sticks. You could take a little bit of mud. You know, you're going to get a little bit messy doing this badge, maybe. And if you don't mind getting muddy hands, you could kind of put the sticks together in a little house with mud. And when the mud dried, that might all stay together. You could also get, uh, you can tell I live where there's a lot of pine trees. In addition to the pine cones, you have all these pine needles. What could you do with these? This could be the door, this could block the door of your elf house if you made an opening and it could be something that the little elves would push open to get inside. Or you could take these pine needles and braid them. You know, get three strands, just like you're braiding your hair. Let's see. And twist them over each other like that. I'm, I'm not sure you all can see that perfectly well, but you get the idea about it'd be like braiding your hair and you could make all kinds of decorations for your little elf house. So that's one idea. You'll come up with lots of your own ideas, just looking around and observing like we talked about before. Being observant means paying attention to those things that are around you and using your imagination to think, what could I do with this that would be a little different from just a pine gum or an acorn or some pine needles? I can make that into something really cool if I thought about it for a while. So that's what your handbook suggests you do. Be really aware of everything you see, whether it's up in the sky with drawing a beautiful cloud or picking out a bird that you think is particularly beautiful and drawing him or looking down and finding maybe ants or bumblebees. You don't want to get too close to those, but you could maybe um, take a picture of one. If you have a cell phone or a camera with you, take a picture of one. And then from your picture, you could draw him. Um, your handbook also suggests that there's other kinds of art besides visual art, like a painting. There's music and dance. Those are also art forms and they suggest, I thought this one would be fun. You'd have to do it with a friend who wouldn't laugh at you and who would understand you're just trying to be creative, but it said observe the movements of other creatures like worms and bees. How do worms move? They squiggle like this and they said you could make up your own dance based on the movements of things you see outside a bee or a worm or a bird and you could make a dance or you could make up a song. There's all kinds of art forms besides visual art. So you might be making flowers out of pine cones, which would be a visual art, or you might actually create your own dance and you and a friend could do it together and maybe show people at home what you'd learned or what you had created by dancing. So Look at your handbook and decide which of those activities would you like to make a brownie elf house and use all kinds of neat things in there. You could get little, um, little acorns and make little cups for them. You could um, find maybe um, little uh, flat rocks and that could be their plates in their little house. You could get really, really wildly creative and have a ball making a house, a little tiny elf house. One other thing they suggest that you might do at home this next week 
is make a wind chime. How many of you have a wind chime at home? You know, it, it makes noise when the wind blows because it, one thing is bumping against another. Well, you can have all kinds of things bumping into each other. You could get string or yarn and tie keys, old keys. If your family has any keys they're not using, you could tie keys together and put them on a long string. And then when the wind blew, the, the metal keys would bump into each other and make a sound. Or you could use old cans, like if your mama opened a can of tomato sauce, you could take the paper off from the outside and you just have the tin can and you could string together. You'd have to get an adult to help you with this. They would uh, make a hole in the top of each can and then string the cans together. There's a picture of it in your handbook. And when the wind blew, those cans would kind of be clanking against each other and maybe make a nice gentle sound. Um, so those are some of the activities that you could do at home this week. Whatever one you pick, be sure and bring it to next week's meeting and we'll share with each other and get ideas from each other and see how creative we've been. Um, one thing too, I, I'm hoping that all of you have access to some outdoor space that's safe that you don't have to drive to because like your own backyard or a nearby public park or just walking around your neighborhood. And we want to try to, to pick up things, you know, that are already fallen. We don't want to pull anything off of a bush or a tree. Um, we want to be careful uh, that we're with, if we're going too far away from home, we're with an adult or a trusted friend, and that we leave the environment the way it was when we got there, except we picked up something that happened to have fallen. But you certainly don't want to pluck pine cones or leaves off someone else's bush. Now, they give you a great list. I think it's, I'm going to find this page. Um, I want all of you to do this. This is on page three of your badge on the outdoor, Brownie Outdoor Art Creator. It says, spot at least three things from the list below. Don't collect or touch anything. Just look at them, observe them, and make a check mark next to the ones you find. And then here's the list. An animal, a plant that is not colored green, a tree with flowers, an insect, a bird, a fallen leaf with a pattern you like, a rock with an unusual shape, a bush as tall as you are, a pine cone or an acorn, and we've talked about those and what you could do with those, colored moss growing on a rock or a tree. Another place you might find moss is if you see anybody with a brick walkway. Sometimes there's moss growing between the, the bricks and that makes a great pattern. And that would be fun to draw or take a picture of. Uh, and then anything else you see that just strikes your fancy and you think, I could make something really neat out of this. I could draw it, I could paint it, or I could change it into something else. Like we changed a pine cone into a flower or a little acorn, a big acorn into a little elf or a little basket if we turned it upside down. So lots of opportunities to be creative and um, share with each other next week. One thing too, I'd really love it if you would bring your completed um, leaf rubbing and the greeting card that you made out of it. Even if you wanna go on and mail it to a friend or a relative that you haven't seen in a while just to brighten up their day, take a picture of it and show us what you did with it uh, for the week. Let me show you some of my other leaves. This is one I love because it had jagged edges. Um, can you see that? And you can make them all different colors. Here's another one. And I really found, I told you all to bring crayons or um, chalk, but I found chalk is easier because you can lay it flat and rub it and it comes off as you can tell. Uh, a lot easier than the crayon does. Sometimes if you rub hard with the crayon, it'll tear your paper. So if you have chalk, that I found is easier. Does anybody have any questions? 
Well, we said that we were going to keep these little meetings short and just let you go wild with your creativity. So I'm looking oh, forward God. to seeing it and what you bring to us next week. And we'll finish up some more of the requirements uh, and suggestions for the Outdoor Art Creator Badge. I'm looking forward to seeing you all next week and your bright shining faces. Is that a, somebody's dog? That's another thing. We're going to talk about pets next week and what we can, how our pets can help us uh, finish a badge requirement. Now that's interesting, isn't it? You'll just have to wait for that for next week. I have liked being with you today and I hope you all have gotten some ideas because we all are creative. Somebody might say, some of your friends might say, oh, I don't want to do the art badge. I can't draw. But you can do all kinds of things besides drawing. Drawing is great fun. But if you don't think that's your thing, you can just use your creativity and go wild and, and make some really neat things. So thank you for letting me be with you today. And I'm looking forward to seeing what we all do for next week. <laughs>